three, two, one. Here we go! Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this Monday installment of We Talk. I'm Yolanda now. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. We have a lot to look forward to this week. Please stay tuned for our interview. Heading over to our website for some news. Nampo warned businesses and banks to be extra vigilant for criminal syndicates involved in defrauding and stealing from shops and banks across the country. In a media statement, the Nampo spokesperson, Deputy Commissioner Kauna Shikwambi, said some of these suspected to be operating the syndicate have been arrested. Nampol is warning businesses, banks, as well as the general public to be extremely cautious and vigilant, moreover to report any suspicious occurrences in the environment to the police. Namibia's reigning Miss Supranational Shonique Rabi jetted off to France on Saturday where she will be attending the MIPCOM 2021, the world's largest television market. Shonique, Shonique made her first appearance on the pink carpet on Sunday evening, for the world premiere screening of Around the World in 80 Days. She will also be having a special photo call at the harbour station and visit all the television content stands later this week. She will also be presenting a Diversify Award for the fifth annual edition of these awards. The Diversify TV Excellence Awards were created in order to recognize, champion and celebrate diversity, equality and inclusion in television programming from around the world. According to Shanique, she is excited to be going on her first official international trip as Miss Supranational. What a better way to do this than this event, which will be an experience that will help her learn and grow. Presenting such a prestigious and meaningful award is such an honor, especially because she is from a diverse nation where people live together in harmony. Recon Africa denies that it is now allegedly trying to bribe community leaders with favors and gifts in the form of social assistance to support their search for oil in Namibia's Kavango region. Allegedly, the George Muyoka Conservancy was asked to compile a list of community members who needed help. According to a source, a similar request was made in another conservancy. Recon Africa's project manager at Rundu, Mundu Kassira, declined to comment on the allegations, although his office staff told the newspapers that he was the right man to talk to. Kassira quickly cut the conversation short and said the spokesperson would be able to provide further information. During another visit to the area, several community members, especially women working in the field, expressed concern about the fact that many politicians are putting pressure on community leaders to smother all opposition to oil exploration. Some community members insist they were only briefed on the seismic survey and how it works afterward. Representatives from three different conservation areas said the community was constantly changing their meeting spots. This was clearly done to prevent them from attending the sessions and airing their grievances. Good news for the tourism industry is that the UK has removed Namibia from the so-called Red List, which will ease travel. The travel easings is effective as from Monday the 11th of October. The red list placement went, meant that people from the UK were banned from travelling to Namibia. It also meant that anyone travelling from Britain to Namibia faced a mandatory 10-day quarantine when returning home, even if they were fully vaccinated and tested negative for coronavirus, which is detrimental especially to Namibia's tourism sector. The decision taken by Britain came after the Ministry of International Relations engaged the High Commission of the United Kingdom in Vintuk, while the High Commission of Namibia in London also engaged at all levels with the UK government on this issue. They argued that consideration should be given to the fact that the curve of infections in Namibia is clearly flattening. According to Micro Executive Director 
Pindananda, the onus is now on Namibia to demonstrate that it is a safe country to travel to, a task which the Namibian tourism sector as well as micro has taken to heart. Strike at gold and win 5,000 Namibian dollars in cash with Neo Paints. Simply buy Neo Paints products from the selected range and stand a chance to get one of 12 mystery buckets filled with gold paint. All 12 winners will each get three extra paint buckets equal to their purchase. One to replace the gold paint, the second to use on your project, and the third to give to a charity of their choice. One winner can score another 10,000 Namibian dollars by showing us your creative use of the golden paint. The best project wins the cash. Offer is valid from 27 September to 18 December at your favorite hardware store nationwide. Visit us at neopaints.com for more competition details and follow us on Facebook for weekly competition updates. Neopaints, a coat of excellence. Heading over to our website for some news. Nampo warned businesses. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today I am joined with Rachel and she's from the GIZ and today we are talking inclusivity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rachel, does disability affect Namibians? Oh yes, it definitely does. I mean just like uh, every person all over the world, you know, is affected by disability. So the way we know that um, disability affects Namibians specifically is because of, you know, the data which uh, which is gathered and um, in 2016 uh, there was this disability report uh, by the NSA with, uh, with, inform with data from the uh, National Population and Household Census. And in that report it stated that um, around 100,000 100, people uh, do, have a certain, do have certain types of disabilities in Namibia. Wow. And from those uh, 100,000 uh, around uh, 52,000 are women with disabilities sure. and 48,000 are men with disabilities and uh, from the entire population around 5% uh, of people do have a disability within the country. But then of course we also know that disability does have um, or does negatively impact the lives of persons with disabilities. Um, just to mention uh, just a few statistics again from that um, report. It stated that um, over 5,000 children with disabilities uh, between the ages of four, uh, zero and four years old yeah. do not even attend early childhood oh. development programs. Oh. Yeah? And um, around, what was the other one? Yeah, 82% of persons with disabilities who live in the rural areas, mainly in the northern part of, uh, of Namibia, they um, have not received any formal types of education uh, which of course negatively will impact exactly. their lives uh, because if you don't have a proper education it will be difficult to really get proper employment yeah. meaning that you are already at the lower scale you know um, you will face definitely poverty and also um, around 0.4 percent of persons with disabilities have employment in Namibia, formal employment, sure. only 0.4% formal employment. You and, know? and the thing is, we have to start at the ground level. We have to start exactly. with early, early yes. childhood development, mm -hmm. because if you don't start there, you're exactly. never going to catch up. On that note, mm -hmm. um, what can businesses do to, to make sure that, that just entering their premises mm -hmm. are more accessible? Yeah. yeah. Businesses, um, especially those who, who cater towards the public sphere, definitely they need to make sure that their infrastructure is accessible to persons with disabilities. But then of course, um, if we speak about infrastructure, because um, I know that from government side, in the past there was not a standard, yeah? a standard uh, for, to make sure that all buildings follow a certain type of physical accessibility. However, there is a, there is a, a standard in, in, in process which is being developed by the NDCN 
yeah, Na National Disability yes. Council of Namibia. And uh, they, in collaboration with various stakeholders, they are busy um, putting that standard together. Mm -hmm. So the business, um, uh, you know, a sector, they can have disabilities. What, is, what does the, the business culture look like in terms of employing people with disability? Um, I don't even just want to go into the business culture, but uh, you know, even if we, if we look at uh, public, you know, from the public side, uh, government, um, it's uh, the, the employment status is, you know, for people with disabilities is very low. Uh, very, very low. Whether we look at the entrance level, middle, you know, um, positions and higher senior positions, um, you, you you hardly find, you know, uh, persons with disabilities at those uh, levels, even employed. Um, what what I do see when I go uh, to public uh, uh, public buildings, uh, public yeah, uh, institutions, I do see. Um, that government, yes, they are trying to employ persons with disabilities, but then um, mainly uh, these lower yes. level uh, employment, cleaning, gardening, uh, and in inside cleaning, and so forth. Um, so there's definitely room for improvement, yeah. not just uh, in terms of employing people, but also in how you know their yeah. business model, how they are going to approach it. Are they putting certain policies in place? Yeah, are they really ensuring that you know if if they find a certain individual with a disability, are they willing to uh, to invest in that person? Yeah, yeah? with uh, training, with additional uh, education, so that you know they can then also can can move up. Yeah, uh, not only these hundred thousand uh, not contributing to the economy, but those businesses. Yeah, if, in, if, if they really consider uh, leaving, uh, you know, if they don't even cater, you know, towards certain needs of persons with disabilities, they're even losing out of making a profit. Because I remember that uh, certain businesses who are more conscious about mm -hmm. inclusivity, they argue that when they actually uh, cater towards persons with disability, yeah, it's not only good for their business, yeah. it's not only good for, for the employees within their uh, enterprises, but it also, of course, contributes towards them making a, a profit. Yeah? Exactly. So, yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, they should also uh, have their businesses um, targeting persons with disabilities. If you see that there's a niche, how can we serve them? Yeah? Why not providing that niche? But, yeah. I wanted to get to that. Uh, with regard to stigma, yes, there is definitely still a stigma uh, with regard to disability. When we look at the languages that people are using, especially you know, with us, the, our local vernacular yeah. languages, uh, we, um, we uh, do not uh, consider persons with disabilities as subjects. Yeah? So by the way we speak, we rather consider them as objects. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that is actually definitely contributes to more stigma because you don't see the person; you just see the disability. So there's definitely uh, a need to revisit or to revise our language, yeah, our te uh, terminologies, yeah. which we use when we are referring to persons with disabilities. Yeah. So there is that stigma, but then of course stigma also uh, within families mm. when they have. Um, a child with a disability, they would rather hide, exactly. hide them. Yeah, yeah? not, uh, not want. They don't want the, these the kids to be seen. Yeah. yeah, because of the stigma attached to it. Yeah, yeah? sometimes they, if they, if they see that okay, it's, it's a per, uh, person with a disability. Of course, also depending on the severity of yeah, the yeah. disability, of course. they might think that um, those kids, or not even kids, but also adults, if they have a certain type of disability, that they. they they're useless. They they are not mm. contributing, yeah, financially to towards you know anything. So that's where the stigma is attached. You know, yeah. also the perception of people, how they they view disability, that also contributes to the stigma. Yeah. So and also because of all this uh, stigma uh, attached to disability, also and um, at the end of the day, when people are looking for employment, yeah. they are also employers. They are also not very keen on employing persons with disabilities because they. They might think, oh, okay, 
if our establishment doesn't have a ramp per, per, for instance if we employ this person who's using a wheelchair we have to build a ramp yeah and they think because they don't they've never been confronted yeah. by disability or by the topic they, they might think that it's so expensive however if they would just do a little bit of uh, research it's not expensive at all okay Rachel mm. thank you so much for your time and um, sharing this this information that is needed to be known and raising mm. awareness on this topic no thank you very much for having me it's always a pleasure to talk about this important topic thank ladies you. and gentlemen we will be back shortly And for today's life hack, you're 20% more likely to catch a cold while you're on a plane than anywhere else you'll go on vacation. To combat this fact, make sure to use hand sanitizer, stay hydrated and use nasal sprays. Next up, Jeanette Dierhaar for Flex Manette. <laughs> Do you have a back pain and you don't know why you have it? Well, perhaps start working on that core muscle, strengthen your core daily, try and do a few exercises for that core. You don't have to have a six pack to be healthy, but you actually just want a bit of core strength. So we will be doing some hip lifts. So uh, this is really the worst for me. So what you're doing is stacking up those legs and you're bringing it up. Okay, so up and down and up and down okay so you're actually also working those that lower back you're pushing yourself up and up you can if you're struggling at first use the momentum of your legs and go up okay four three two and one so you'll definitely feel that in your lower abs as well so now we we're gonna stretch us, we're gonna stretch ourselves out and come up. I want you to actually do some toe pulses. Toe pulses. Try and reach for your toes while you're doing this. So you really gotta stretch it out. So this one is also another killer. But work on that core muscles, guys. And another thing, why you're doing your own thing every day, always remember to tuck in your core, be all, be ready when someone is trying to punch you in the gut, but that's just how prepared you should be. Not prepared, but actually how you should keep your core the whole day, and that will also improve a lot of things. I will see you guys next time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our show for today. I hope you had fun. I am going to start practicing my piano lessons again, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye.